Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today I'm going to continue on with the plant review series, and today's plant I've not had in my care for many years. I think we're coming up to about a year, but I thought it might be a good idea to share my experiences with it. And the plant I'm going to be talking about today, let me pick it up, is the Amedrium Medium Blue. And this is sometimes also known as the Spider-Man plant. You can see some of the more recent leaves are starting to get the secondary fenestrations, which are the secondary kind of splits or the holes along the midrib. Also, you can see some of the older leaves only had the kind of standard fenestration. Now, as with all of these reviews, if you're coming back and you've been through most of this series already, welcome back. It's nice to have you here. And as always, you can see that down below there'll be the chapters. So if you want to skip to your favorite bit, please do. If you're new, however, welcome to the channel and the slight insanity that is me. <laughs> but with this plant review series, essentially what I'm hoping to achieve is the same way that you would look online and you would look for a review of a product to do the same thing for plants because a lot of the times you'll get reviews on plant stores but very rarely will you get an actual review on plants and i do encourage you if you do have this plant yourself do consider dropping a comment down below the same way that you might write an amazon review the goods the bads the uglies all of it put it down below because hopefully what these videos will become in the future is a repository for people who can come and check and see i'm thinking about buying that plant what have other people's experiences been like with that plant in their conditions? Have they found it easy? Have they found it hard? Now, what I always say for the people that are just joining, there is no way possible this video isn't going to be biased. It's biased because it is my review about my plant in my condition, which is growing in a greenhouse, in a, not a greenhouse, I do grow some things in a greenhouse, but in a conservatory in the UK and whatever that might mean in the summer and the winter months. But yeah, I think that's everything I want to say in terms of groundwork. Let's move on to the first topic. So background with this awesome plant. Now, the situation with this plant was I was trying to find it online. I did eventually come across it on eBay. I became aware of this plant around the same time that everybody else has become aware of this plant. Interestingly, this has lost some popularity. It kind of boomed onto the houseplant market for a while. Everybody was really keen to get their hands on it. It was quite an expensive kind of plant to get. We'll talk a bit more about that in terms of availability. But then people started to lose interest. And some of what I'm going to say in the rest of the review might show my opinions on the reason why. But eventually I did find it on eBay, I think. It was a relatively reasonable price, or at least I thought at that time. And if I'm not mistaken, it was a three leaf rooted cutting. And this is one of the original leaves that still remains onto, I think I've lost the other two, but this is one of the original leaves. And you can see how tiny it was. I will see about adding a picture here from my plant care app. Don't judge, they are pictures that are very hastily taken to put into the plant care app. But you can see what it was like when I first got it. Interestingly enough, one of the leaves looked like it either had edema or some form of fungal or bacterial infection. It didn't have that many leaves and I, it was already struggling after being shipped to me. So I left it on there, but I kind of tried to make sure that it wasn't touching any other plant part of this plant or any other plant around it. And I kept an eye on the plant to see that it didn't progress anywhere else. Otherwise, I would have taken immediate action. Gratefully, nothing really happened off that. So it probably was just a burst uh, edema. So that was all fine. It didn't get any infections or anything like that. And eventually that leaf did drop. And by that point, I already had two new leaves. So I was completely okay with that. But I will say that it hasn't been smooth sailing with this plant. But yeah, overall, it was, it was a good plant to add to my collection when I did. 
But I think that's everything I want to say about background. It's not massively exciting with this plant. It was, I was looking for it, I found it on eBay. It had a bit of an issue there with the leaf. I treated it, made sure that it wasn't touching anything else. But other than that, the kind of gaining of this plant into my collection wasn't very eventful. Now, speed of growth for this one, and this is the key one here, and I'm showing you this whole section here that's growing along the board, essentially, and, or the plank, this is, and I have done another video, I'll link it up the top there, about growing plants on a plank, and it was actually featuring this plant. It was one of the first plants that I put properly on a plank, so I'll link it up at the top so you can see it, but, it's interesting because the reason why I thought I was going to do this and what I kept hearing online is this plant has a propensity to run. And you might be able to see an example of that here where it's not touching the plank. And by run, and you've probably noticed this is on some of your other plants, is when they send out stem or anything along those lines and it has no leaves for a very long period of time and then eventually it might get a leaf. So what happened with a lot of these plants when they first came on the market is because people were getting so many runners, they were chopping it up and selling kind of essentially wet sticks. So no leaf, just the node and people were hoping to grow it. Now, <laughs> we've come on to the bit as to why I think this plant may have dropped slightly in terms of popularity. This has got to be not the slowest plant, it's not quite at the level of say um, a ZZ plant or a Zamiococo Zamifolia, but it is a very slow growing plant. As I've said, I've had this for a year and barring one or two leaves that I lost from when I first got it, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven leaves. And I won't lie, these three leaves happened this summer. These happened the year before. So it wasn't great at bringing out new leaves in the winter. I'm assuming that's where this area happened here as well. And the other reason why this area of kind of running happened was because essentially it wasn't having good contact with the plank. Hopefully I've got a clip that I can insert here so you can see how the actual roots, and it'll be a close up of how the roots actually are attaching to the plank. What I have done, however, is I have used some dampened sphagnum moss at the very top because I wanted to root into the moss and then be able to take it off the plank, chop it off here basically, grow this separately and basically put it back into the same plant to create a bushier plant. So height isn't a problem for me in here. I've got relatively large plants. I don't need more tall plants. I do want bushier plants, however. Ease of propagation with this one, and I'm not gonna lie, I haven't had a chance to propagate it yet. I'm waiting for essentially what is kind of an in-between of air layering to happen, which is what's happening here at the top, and then I will be propagating it from what I have heard from other people, and considering that this didn't have an awful lot of roots to begin with, I wouldn't imagine it's particularly difficult to propagate and I'm being very specific about the words that I use here, I don't think it's fast to propagate. So there is a slight difference there. So it's not difficult. I don't think it's particularly challenging and I can't really talk about wet stick propagation here. And I know this is something that maybe frustrated a few people from what I was seeing from what was being discussed online. So that might be a bit difficult, but if you've got a leaf and you've got a node and you potentially get something like an air layer, so you've got a bit of a, a root as well, I wouldn't imagine it would be that difficult. Based on how slow this plant grows, I would say it would be quite a long process. Now, I can only talk about the blue, a medium and medium. I don't have the standard green form, but from what I've heard, both of these tend to be on the slower side. Interestingly enough, the variegated one of these plants is the fastest growing, which is, it kind of goes against the grain because a lot of the variegated plants, a lot of the variegated version of most plants tend to be slower growing, slower to propagate, all of these things. And I'm probably going to get some hate for this, and I've mentioned this in another video recently. I am not the biggest fan of the variegated one. I did have an opportunity to buy that as well. I think that was about the same price as this when I got it. 
for this plant specifically, the variegated version, the leaves, the way that the leaves grow because of the variegation, to me, looks like the plant's a bit diseased. So it didn't speak to me, don't come at me in the comments, I'm different strokes for different folks. I, it's not for me the variegated version, but I do like the blue one, which is why I got it. Would I get the green one? Probably, actually. So moving on to availability for this one, and I did touch on this a bit earlier on. Now, when it first came out, and I'm looking a few years back now, and it kind of boomed onto the market, it was a new thing, people hadn't really seen the medium, and I mean, I know. <laughs> Uh, we did it. We did a podcast with Jane Farone for On the Ledge podcast, talking about these new plants that really aren't new. They've been around since the seventies or eighties, but they've got forgotten, and they're only now doing their comeback. Where, for instance, maybe the Monstera deliciosa, and I'm pointing down at mine, or uh, what was just, ah, the Golden Pothos. And keep pointing at things. Believe me, these is this is the places where all these things are in my conservatory, but. Both of those haven't really gone away too much, as they've always been around, but some of these, like the Amidrooms, have disappeared from people's kind of peripheral view, really, and they're just coming back recently. But these plants were, when they first came back on the market, mid to high double digits, I would say, for an okay established plant. It wasn't huge, it probably was only about this much, maybe four or five leaves, basically. And it has steadily dropped down. By the time I got mine, I think it was low, low, low double digits. And uh, there were more expensive ones there. So I was taking a bit of a risk going, uh, is this gonna be? And it was relatively juvenile. I was fortunate that it had some of the fenestrations on the leaves. Super, super juvenile ones. For instance, if you're growing from just a node cutting, so a wet stick, I think, the first leaf or two tend to be without fenestrations. I might be wrong, correct me down below. As I said, I've not tried it, so I don't know, but I think that's what happens. But yeah, the price has gone down. I don't think it's changed too drastically. Maybe it's at the moment, it's probably still double digits, probably still triple digits, low, trip, low, low, low triple digits, it's probably around the 100 mark, basically, or maybe it's starting to go into the double digits. I haven't checked recently. I've only really had this for a year, so I wouldn't have imagined the prices would have changed that much. Do I think it's going to get much lower? Probably not, purely because of the speed of growth of this one, and what I would imagine would be a slow speed of propagation as well. Because... So the reality is, if all you're doing is buying this plant as an investment, and you're wanting to grow it, to get a leaf, to get a node, to then cut it, to then propagate it, or even not propagate it, and just sell it as an unrooted cutting, then yeah, you could probably sell them a bit faster. Uh, I tend to like to get my plants, to have my plants, maybe then propagate it. I don't think I've ever sold anything necessarily. I tend to give gifts to friends, or people in need. Good karma. I've got some amazing plants that came to me as gifts, and hopefully I have given some amazing plants to some people that really wanted them. So, but yeah, I don't think the price is going to drop too much on this, purely because of how long it takes to grow. At least that's been my experience. If you've had this plant and it has grown faster for you, do let me know. So, pests with the Amidrium mediums. In my experience, I have only ever noticed spider mites on the plant once. It didn't get out of control very quickly. They were dealt with relatively quickly without too much of an issue. And yeah, I think that was pretty much it on this plant in terms of pests. I did mention that potential edema or potential bacterial infection or potential viral infection that was on that first leaf. I don't know because it's not happened since. I am growing in pond, so that might have something to do with it. But generally speaking, this plant has been relatively pest free for me. And based on how slow it grows, that's ah, probably a good thing. Because can you imagine if you lost a couple of leaves that took you nearly a year to grow? <laughs> You'd be sitting there twitching in the corner, basically. I would imagine, and I'm trying to think if I ever had thrips on this, maybe I did and I treated them quite quickly, 
but the leaves tend to be quite stiff and a bit kind of that kind of corrugated feel. Very similar in texture to the Monstera Spa Peru. I think it's also called the Monstera Castanianum. But yeah, with these plants, I would imagine because their leaf texture is a bit more of that succulent side of things, thrips could be interested on that. And I really am trying to think now. I, maybe I did have thrips on this, I cannot remember. But yeah, relatively pest free for me. So moving on to accessories for this plant, and I will pick it up again, and I will show you obviously the most obvious accessory, a plank. For me, with this plant, is a must. That there's no way around growing this on a plank, especially if you don't want it to run. I've seen people that have grown this on support sticks, I've seen people that have grown this on moss poles, they have all had the same problem. I grew it on the plank to see if that made a difference. And yeah, it hasn't started running until it's come off the moss pole here. And then it started running, basically. I know there was this section here, but as I said, it wasn't making good contact. And that was a failure on my part in the beginning, because you might be able to see the other thing that I want to talk about accessories is some way of attaching the growing stem to the actual plank, it's plank itself and make sure that it's tight as well. Because I have seen a lot of other plants that I've got now on planks and the aerial roots that they use to attach to the plank or a wall or anything along those lines tend to be not only large, but also relatively hairy almost. And it's those hairs that attach and relatively long. So there's a lot more support and it can kind of attach and fasten itself quite quickly. It's interesting because what I've noticed when it does attach is the, the, the growing stem, instead of it being a nice round circle, it starts flattening out a bit against the wall. So it's kind of flat on the side where the plank is on and slightly more rounded on the outside, which I thought was kind of cool. I don't think this happens with any of my other plants that are on a plank. Now, you might want to use something like moss like I'm doing here in terms of air layering, so lifting it slightly off the plank in terms of being able to air layer it. Because, and I've mentioned this again in the video that I was talking about growing your plants on a plank. Yes, they will grow bigger. And for instance, I'll show you this. There's secondary fenestrations and they happen quite quickly. Ignore the slight browning that's happened on this. This is very high up on the shelf there and it's getting a lot of bright, bright direct light. I've done the best that I can in terms of shade cloth, but uh, probably by the time that this video comes out, it will be one of the warmest heat waves that we've had in the UK. I'm not doing a video on the heat wave, but a lot of other people have done that and they've covered the majority of the stuff that I wanted to say as well. So there's no point in me doing one of those as well. But yeah, it's gonna get hot for context at the moment when I'm filming this, I'm filming this before, a couple of days before this comes out and a couple of days before the biggest temperatures are going to hit, it's going to hit 41 degrees, 40 to 41 degrees Celsius in the UK. I'm from Greece originally and we're used to seeing those temperatures, but that's a warm country meant for warm country things. This is a cold country meant for cold country things. So. <laughs> Watch the space, it's going to be interesting. I'm probably going to be watering three times a day. But, sorry, way off topic and on a tangent there. But yes, definitely get something like moss if you don't already have, just so you can kind of easily propagate it out, essentially. The other thing that I will say about this is I've only ever grown it in pond. And I've had good success with this in pond. I didn't put it straight into water reservoir. I had it in transitional and just watered it as if it was soil for the first six months. And only recently transitioned this into uh, water reservoir. Could not be happier. As soon as I move any of my plants that are in transitional phase from pond into a reservoir, it's happy days because it means a lot less faff when it comes to watering. And that's the whole reason I did the transition of pond for a lot of my plants is for summer months like this where I can just literally go around and fill reservoirs rather than having to pull plants individually off shelves to water them and put them back in. I don't know. Nobody's got time for that. But yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say for accessories. Let's go into final thoughts. So my final thoughts for this plant and you might have been able to guess already. I'll start with what I usually would do and say, if 
I didn't have this plant and knowing what I know now, would I purchase this plant? Maybe, maybe. The, and the reason why I say this is, it hasn't been particularly tricky to grow. I don't need to hover around it too much. The slowness does put me off. The beauty of it still stands though. I still think it's a beautiful looking houseplant. If only it grew as exponentially as, for instance, the Raphidophora tetrasperma. <laughs> this would be a plant that everybody would want. It would also be a lot cheaper then. No surprise there. But yeah, definitely a, a strong maybe, pr probably, probably, I guess. Uh, in terms of the score for this one from 0 to 10, 10 being the best, 0 being the worst, probably a solid 5 or a 6. And the reason why I've taken off that many points from this is because of the speed. Other than that, it's a really, really good plant. And I kind of almost feel guilty for giving it that much of a low score, but I can't put it up at the same level as I might have, for instance, my Esmeralda Dense, which is not only stunning, it does grow relatively fast and it doesn't really give me any real issues. So there is that as well. The, the plank element and all of these things, because I know that not everybody's going to be able to make or want to make a plank. So this might not be for everybody. And especially seeing as the prices are still relatively high. I'm, I'm still the cheap person who, if any plant is over 20 Great British Pounds, I still flinch. Even with the plants that I've got in my can out, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about this plant. If you've got your own review, please do drop it down below. If you've got any comments, drop them down below. I'd love to kind of have that chat with you. As I say with most of these videos, I'm only around for the first kind of day or two after I post. So if you do want to reach me for any more questions, if you're seeing this way in the future, I'll put my Instagram up here. Do follow me on there as well. And a lot more communicated on there when you send me a message on there. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.